Hey everybody, I just wanted to give a little uh, shout out to my friends at Fellowship of the Martyrs, uh, Doug and Cindy Perry, and the rest of the family there in Excelsior Springs, Missouri, and just give a little word about what I experienced when I went there uh, in October to get baptized and uh, just fellowship with them at one of their conferences. I had never been to a Christian conference before, and um, I'll give my a more full testimony at a different video but um, what I experienced there uh, was something that uh, I sh I'd like to warn you about if you're thinking about going there I think if, if you if you if you go to the FOTM uh, conference one of their conferences that they have uh, don't be surprised if you find yourself uh, smothered in love and kindness and hospitality and blessings and prayer and worship of God and rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Um, it was a, a really beautiful uh, weekend that I had there and it was anointed. Um, I, I prayed and fasted for two or three weeks before I went there for the perfect weather because I wanted to be baptized in the Missouri River. And it was like summertime in October. And um, there was just, uh, it seemed like one answered prayer after another and so much confirmation. And uh, it was just really beautiful. So if those things don't sound good to you, I would say don't go. If you don't want to be blessed, if you don't want to be smothered in prayer and loving kindness and hospitality, um, don't go there. It's probably not for you if those things sound bad to you. Um, but if you, those things sound right to you, I think you should get on the FOTM website, fellowshipwithemartyrs.com, and look at the dates that they have their conferences coming up this year and make some plans to go visit, and you will be blessed. And, uh, yeah. So that's about, <clears throat> that's my eyewitness account. Um of FOTM and I came upon their videos when I was searching for uh, more information about divorce and remarriage because I've been divorced for almost 20 years and um, <clears throat> since I got saved a few years ago I've had I've ran into a few pastors and teachers that say that uh, and that believe that anyone who's remarried is an adulterer and is therefore going to hell and um, that didn't really wash with me even when I hadn't read the whole Bible yet. But even after I did read the whole Bible, it still didn't make much sense because God saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. And Psalm 68 says that the Lord sets the solitary in families. Um, he removes our sins as far as the east or from the west. He throws them into the depths of the sea and he remembers them no more. Uh, God is merciful and gracious and forgiving and kind. And uh, of course, he, he doesn't like divorce, but nobody does. And then the list of six things, yea, seven, that he hates in the book of Proverbs, uh, divorce is not one of those things listed. There, He hates all kinds of things. He hates anything that is sinful because he's holy and righteous and perfect. And uh, we're supposed to hate things that he hates and love things that he loves. But, and unfortunately, sometimes divorce does happen and uh, unfortunately becomes necessary. And I think nobody that goes through it enjoys having their life ripped apart. Um, and it's something that I don't think anybody wants to repeat. Uh, but anyway, that uh, if you're interested in a more in-depth teaching on that, you can listen to Doug's <laughs> teaching. Uh, he explains it way better than I do. And he has a link to his on his playlist for about marriages and, re and remarriage. There is another video by a Messianic brother named Steve Berkson, um, who goes a little bit more in, in depth uh, and explains the the Greek translations uh, and uh, of putting away and divorce and what those things mean and about how uh, none of the law will change until Christ comes back and so on. But um, anyway, and the fact that God himself divorced Israel. Uh, and uh, it's Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1. Um, it's not a pleasant thing. 
Uh, there's a lot of verses in, in Isaiah and Jeremiah in particular that are just heartbreaking. Um, absolutely heartbreaking. You can hear, feel the heart of God breaking over the disobedience of, of his people, his children that he loves so much. Um, when when his children run after other false false gods and uh, all for, different forms of idolatry that are so rampant uh, even today uh, and becoming more rampant all the time. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy, uh, maybe the craziest time the world has ever seen and it seems to just be getting more and more that way. But praise God, that means that uh, we're getting closer to Jesus as time moves on, the way time works, the way God created time. Just remember that every moment is a moment that he made and we're to rejoice and be glad in every moment that he made. Uh, so yeah, and uh, in regards to people that um, I've noticed, a couple people in my family, when I told them about my trip to be baptized, it turned out, I knew that they were kind of uh, anti-Christian, but I didn't realize how anti-Christ their beliefs really are. And um, one of the first things they did is get online, they did research about Doug Perry and found that a couple people had said some bad things about Doug Perry online and were so worried about me for running off and joining this cult where people are saying bad things about somebody online. And uh, anyway, it brings to mind that one of the Proverbs 18 verse 13 says, he that, uh, hears, he that answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. That, uh, that means if, like, if you only hear one side of the story and you make your decision based on that, that's your own fault, and it's uh, it's childish, it's it's foolish, and it's shameful. And if you go run and spreading the decision that you made as as though it was fact, well, there's a, a word for that that's uh, called a talebearer in the Bible. God hates talebearers. It's gossip. It's childish, uh, at best. It's childish at best. And I think demonic at its core, uh, because it. Uh, it's a, for, a form of assassination. It attempts people to judge the person that you're gossiping about. And uh, so, yeah, I would really encourage you, anyone, uh, before you visit any ministry, listen to what that minister has to say for themselves. One of the videos that Doug, uh, that just blew me away when I first was reading uh, and, and listening to, to some of his videos he actually says in one of his videos, it's his goal to get people to understand, to get so close to God to, that they don't need to listen to him anymore. That's his whole goal is for, he wants people to have such a strong relationship with Jesus Christ that they won't need to listen to Doug Perry anymore. And that might be the most humble statement I've ever heard from a minister. So how many ministers have you heard that say, if you don't, if you're not tithing to them, you're stealing from God. But Doug says, he just wants you to know Jesus so well that you don't need to listen to him anymore. And I don't see how you can get mad at somebody like that if you're a Christian. If you're a non-believer, I pray that you just keep a, I don't know why you'd be watching this, but um, I, I, pray, I pray that you just keep on seeking the face of God and ask God to reveal himself to you. And uh, don't worry about what other people say because uh, true Christianity is, true, is a relationship with the one true and living God that created the universe through Christ Jesus. And, uh, and for that matter, if, um, some, cause I've seen, there are some people in Doug's ministry, I noticed in his live streams, there's a, a young man that had previously said bad things about his ministry and is now repented. And, and Doug and Cindy, it's, <laughs> it's like the guy's apology was almost unnecessary. It's like they, they're so they they just they just love him immediately as a reflex. It's like um, anyway, it reminds me of my relatives in Tennessee, my aunt and uncle, and my grandmother who was just and uh, on my mom's side that were just really strong, shiny Christians that just uh, were loving and prayerful, kind of, and their faith was kind of like a reflex, and. Um, that's the kind of people that Doug and Cindy are. You're not going to find people more down to earth and loving and kind. Um, but then uh, I don't live there for what it's worth. I, I live in Illinois and uh, I had, it was just amazing. God set up everything so that I was able to get there and back. Um, 
on a shoestring budget. I actually, when I was there, I tried to give Doug some cash and uh, he said, put that away, Robert. We don't charge money for ministry. And they spent, I was just trying to give him 20 bucks and he told me to put it away. And I know they, they spent easily more than that on gas money just to drive me around while I was there. And I tried to offer the same money to Jeremiah, who I stayed with when I was there. He said, put that away. We don't take money for ministry. And I've had people accuse me, like people in my family actually asked me, how much did I pay him to, for baptism? How much did I pay Doug Perry for baptism in the Missouri River? People are so deluded, they actually think that Doug Perry owns the Missouri River and that he can charge somehow admission. Like, it's sad. It, it, it really is sad. People are so willing to stab people, other people in the back. Um, some of them sometimes highly educated people uh, are just so tempted. And it's just uh, the idea of gossip, tail bearing, is, it's just something that... Uh, it's a sad, one of the sad things that we see all over the world today and the way the media works and social media is common and it's popular to, uh, to slander other people. And it's kind of, it's like a, a, a weird form of entertainment, um, that the world seems to be embracing. Um, anyway, that's, uh, kind of steering, steering off, but that's, uh, that's my experience with Fellowship of the Martyrs and, uh. I highly recommend anybody going there who wants to strength, uh, grow and strengthen in Christ and uh, learn more about uh, anything you want to learn about, uh, in, anything more about salvation and healing and deliverance. Uh, yeah. So, and for that matter, if, uh, let's, let's say that um, there were a dozen people that said something bad about Doug, Doug Perry on the internet. Well, he has over 20,000 people that are subscribed to his channel. So, okay. So, Doug Perry, okay, 20,000 versus a dozen. 20,000 people that subscribe to him and trust him and listen to him over something like almost 2,000 videos that he has up where you can go and listen to him speak for himself instead of what somebody else has to say about him. And uh, he's written eight books. Um, I'm sure none of his critics have read any of his books. I'm pretty sure of that. But anyway, I'm not trying to pick a fight with somebody who has read a book and doesn't like something he wrote, whatever. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's okay. So if uh, even if you found 2,000 people online that said something bad about Doug Perry, Doug Perry still wins in a landslide. See, he has over 20,000 subscribers. See, Doug Perry would win that in a landslide. If it were an election, Doug Perry wins. And for that matter, if there were 20,000 people that said something bad about him on the internet, he would still win because he has that. He has more than that. He has over 20,000 subscribers to his channel. So anyway, uh, I know that people that throw stones hate it when you use numbers to make a point. So uh, anyway, so God bless you and keep you. Uh, may God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord Jesus lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace that passes all understanding. Have a blessed day.